the development in Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger. We now have joining us via Zoom at this moment, Dr. Abdurrahman Abu Hamisu. He is a governance and international affairs analyst. Welcome to the news, our doctor. What do you make of the position of the military junta currently on leaving ECOWAS? Well, thank you very much for having me. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's about people fighting for the ideas that they believe in. ECOWAS is fighting for the restoration of constitutional order, as I said, and the junta is looking for a soft landing based on what they perceive to be the interest and the interest of their nation. We should not forget the fact that the countries we're talking about are not just uh, mere states or regions uh, that are bordering ECOWAS uh, nations. Uh, there are sovereign nations that have the capacity to say enough is enough, we don't belong to any association or any group that we feel is a drag on our agenda for our people. And we shouldn't forget the fact that at a point in time, Nigeria was ruled by the Junta uh, when we are in crisis, and so that we are able to sort out ourselves, even the constitution that we're talking about today, the foundation of the uh, democracy we're talking about today was led by the military. Uh, the 1999 constitution was uh, the handwork of the military uh, so that when we're talking about these issues nothing is cast in stone uh, we're talking about people people and nations that are dynamic people that are, are about their interests and they're all out for their interest doctor do you think this is setting the stage for a rival union within the regional bloc and the region by extension you see we continue to warn um, ECOWAS is an association. The ECOWAS is not a sovereign nation. Any nation can decide to withdraw its member if you when they feel their interest is no longer taken care of. And if you read the statement of the juntas carefully, uh, it, the, 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 the statement is uh, an affirmation as well as a, recal a recalibration of uh, Pan Africanism and the spirit of. Uh, uh, Pan-Africanism. So uh, such a statement will strike a chord with many segments of the society, especially uh, people and nations that want to break away from uh, neocolonialism. Now, ECOWAS must treat carefully because it is in a very dicey situation. Uh, the Juntas are saying that they are fighting the uh, former colonial master, which is uh, France. And then whatever the ECOWA uh, subregion is doing as a block to say that they want to restore constitutional order will be seen and interpreted by the people of this country uh, and then the juntas as a way of uh, leading them back to a uh, new colonialism. And that is exactly what their message is, uh, is all about that the echoes that they knew as derailed from the founding uh, father's uh, ideas that guided the formation of echoes, which is uh, uh, bringing um, the echoes subregion uh, closer and then ensuring that all the vestiges of um, colonialism and neocolonialism as we are, are, are uprooted from the soils of Africa. And then you have a situation, a very dicey one, uh, of course, he's saying that um, they must restore, restore democracy. And then the junta and the people are saying this democracy is not servicing our interests. It's servicing the interests of our, our former colonial master, and we have to do away with it. And by the time you come back to say that they have to go back to uh, 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 democracy, it's as if you are asking them to uh, relinquish power and they return their countries uh, to the hands of uh, their former colonial master, in, which in, is indeed, France. Indeed, Dr. Hamisu, indeed. Uh, so would you say the bold step that these nations of uh, the military administrations in Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso have taken so far would sort of create, um, awaken the zeal among other nations and um, perhaps their military and its people to support such uprising. Because, I mean, you remember that the media was awash um, with videos of um, citizens of these countries who were openly celebrating on the streets when their democratic government were taking over. So would you call this a strategic position to awaken the spirit among um, other African nations as at this time? Of course, it's about strategy. It's about strategy. It's about power. It's about what you want to do with power. Now, uh, we have a democracy. For instance, in Nigeria, 
that has not been working, that has not been servicing the interests of the people. Uh, for the first time in the history of this country, under democratic government, we became the poverty capital of the world. Uh, insecurity is really taking a toll on the economy and the lives of the people. Uh, the middle belt that used to um, uh, feed the nation has become an enclave of war between the others and the, and the farmers. So wherever you go to in Nigeria, it's a democracy that is in crisis. Most of these countries are witnessing the same thing. And then the military struck, and the people are celebrating. And then we and then we are saying that uh, they must return to a constitutional order. The question is, is it the form of government that matters or the welfare of a people under a government? Uh, who says that it is only democracy that will give people development? We have one party state in China, and today the Chinese are ruling the world. We are all running to China to beg for aid, and we never rejected their aid. But then what gave them development will now say they should relinquish it. But we have um, Rwanda. When Kagame started, he was, the darling, so he was the darling of the West, and they were praising him. After a while, he realized that one multi-party democracy was not going to take his country anywhere, and he decided to do what he, need, he needed to do. And today, Rwanda has overtaken Nigeria in terms of all the indices of development. Now, coming to the, the, the question you posed, any sensible person, any right-thinking person that is patriotic, that wants the best for its people, will support the position of the juntas that have come together to say, look, this particular ECOWAS is not servicing our interests. It has been turned into the tool of our former colonial masters to inflict injuries on our people, and we will not take that. And because of that, we are pulling out of ECOWAS. And if ECOWAS is not taking, if case is not taking, a lot of member states will leave ECOWAS because it is about strategic um, 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 positioning. Now they did this so that they can be able to effectively um, engage with ECOWAS to ensure that uh, nothing is... Okay, uh, Doctor, bearing in mind that some political theorists at this moment have begun uh, postulating and also predicting that um, democracy, or at least the rendition of democracy being practiced, you know, in the West and other Western parts of the world is failing in one way or another. Bearing in mind, uh, would it be a bold standpoint to say at this point that with the move of this three nations at this time, that um, negotiations would definitely close? Uh, no, no. I, I, I think they did it with, with, with an open mind to ensure that there is negotiation. Now, the, the joke is on ECOWAS. Uh, ECOWAS is set up by these three countries for evaluation. And the world is evaluating ECOWAS because they are choosing ECOWAS of the really from the ideas of the founding fathers. No, that is not what we are doing. And let them give assurances. And if they cannot do that, then the world will understand the fact that actually, uh, ECOWAS has become a tool of recolonization instead of a tool for liberation and common good of the people of Africa. So uh, the joke is on ECOWAS and the leadership of ECOWAS. Dr. Abdurrahman Abouhamis with Governance and International Affairs Analyst, thank you so much for your contributions and perspectives on the news hour. Have a good evening.